everyone, how are you? I'm Jessica. Today I'm sharing something new. So I get asked all the time uh, how to do certain quilting techniques, how to make certain pieces that are used in a block. So as time allows, I'm gonna cover units that we use very often in quilting. And today we're talking about flying geese, specifically the stitch and flip flying geese. There are a couple of different ways that you can make flying geese. You can use triangles like they did it old school years and years ago when they were making quilts. They cut out three different triangles and turn those into flying geese. You can use four at a time method, which is a newer method where um, you have very little waste in that. So you cut a larger square, you use um, two squares on top of that diagonally, you sew on either side of your center line, cut apart, add the next square, sew. So that's another method we'll cover a different day. Um, there's also, you can use, um, there's like foundation papers that you can use to make flying geese, and there's stitch and flip. Now stitch and flip flying geese are my favorite ones. I actually think that everyone is gonna have their own preference. It's just like any other step in quilting, you're gonna have a way that you love the best that works really great for you, and stitch and flip is it. When I first started, I did find stitch and flip geese. Actually, I found all flying geese challenging. Um, so it just took a lot of practice to feel comfortable and to get good at them, to get the results that you want with it. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step on a stitch and flip flying geese. Let's get started. So I have cut out the pieces needed to make a few different flying geese in two different sizes just to show you that um, this technique works for any size, big, small, whatever the flying geese is, this method will work. So first let's get started with one unit. I have a two and a half inch by four and a half inch rectangle here. And to go with that, I need two two and a half inch squares. So to make one stitch and flip flying geese you need a rectangle and two squares again this will work for this is a two by four finished flying geese this will work for three by six this will work for one by two this will work for you know any size you can think of this will work so the method to do this this is like what it's supposed to look like your square is going to go sit on top of your rectangle and you're going to sew from corner to corner and then when you fold this back you're gonna be left with one side of your flying geese. Then you're gonna repeat that same thing on this other side, and that will leave you with your unit. So I am a self-taught quilter, so anything I do, I've learned myself over trial and error of, of since I started uh, sewing. So when I was learning about flying geese, I read and I um, saw other people do it this way, where you would draw, you would take your ruler, um, and you would take a pencil. I've always found best results with a mechanical pencil here because with a regular lead pencil, the lead can get really fat and it can make your line um, bigger than you need it to be. So you're gonna take your ruler and you mark it from corner to corner and you just draw on the back of your fabric with this line. And this is the way that I learned to do it. So that I would lay this on here now and you sew on this drawn line. Now, I found that this is extremely time consuming um, and I just didn't want to do it, but it works perfectly. So this is the kind of thing that like, if it works for you, do it. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with drawing these lines, it's just not right for me. If you did draw the line like that, then you would just come here and you'd sew right on that line, cut your threads, and you're left with this really nice unit. So your stitch line is exactly on your pencil line. When you fold this back, it's gonna match exactly perfectly on the side here and the bottom here. Now that does, does take a little practice. So if you're making these units and you're not getting um, those results, don't, don't be worried, you just need to practice more. So the next step then would be to trim this away. Now, when the unit is small like this and I can hold it in my hand nicely, I prefer to trim this away with scissors. But you can, I'll show you on my cutting mat later about lining these up. If you have a lot and you need to cut them all at once, I'll show you how to do that. But let me just make this first one with you just so you see the process. 
And here you're shooting for like a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but this is not as strict of a quarter of an inch as, you know, um, like the edges of your block or something like that. This is going to sit underneath and it's not going to interact with anything else. So if you are bigger than a quarter of an inch, that's no problem. Now, you, what you would do then is repeat the same exact process on the other side, but let me show you what I do. Instead of drawing those lines, I have these lines drawn on my sewing machine. I did this myself with a ruler and Sharpie. It's so functional and I hesitated for so long because on my last sewing machine, I did it right away. As soon as I got it, I drew these lines and they were helpful every single day forever. Like they're wonderful. On this new one, I was like, oh, it's so new. I don't, I don't want to draw on it. So I had it marked with washi tape for a while. And then I just took the plunge and drew the lines. And I'm like, why did I wait? They make so much sense to me. So this first line is in line with my needle. It is exactly in line with my needle. The second line is a quarter inch over. And the third line is a quarter inch over from that. So I have within this space of these three lines, it's a half of an inch. Um, but for right now, the most important one is the first one which is in line with my needle so if I drop my needle on this corner right here let me just do that and then I line this bottom corner up with that straight line and I keep as I sew I keep this corner on that line and when I leave my um, drawn line I look at my stitch plate because that's in line too so I can mark it that way if I do that I have a perfectly sewn line exactly in the same spot that my pencil line would have been, but I didn't have to take all the time to use a ruler and a pencil and draw on every single square. So this is the method that I do. And then I come in and trim this away. And we are left with one flying geese unit. Now the idea of a flying geese unit, what it, the ideal of what you're trying to achieve is that this diagonal comes up into the corner and makes a really perfect diagonal here. So see how like my points are both hitting? You want that on both sides. And the bottom here, they should be they should be flat with each other like this. Uh, but most importantly is that from this point of this V down to this edge is a quarter of an inch. And the reason being is that when you sew this into a block, if you sew with your quarter of an inch seam, like we always do in quilting, that you're gonna sew with your quarter of an inch seam along this and you're not gonna cut your point off. You're gonna sew actually right below it. So then when you open this up into a block, your V, this point, of the what this V right here, your seam is gonna be sitting right at this point and it's just gonna look beautiful. So that's what you're striving for. And it is tricky and it does take practice. So it's one of those things that you just have to keep working toward and, and um, the more you do, the better you get. Okay, so that's one. If I was doing a whole bunch of flying geese, you know I love, love, love chain piecing. So what I would do, now I only have one here, but um, what I would do is I do all one side at once. So let's say I'm dropping my needle on that point and I'm keeping this point aligned here. So I would do every single one. Now let me show you my little baby one. I can align this up here too. This is a one and a half by two and a half inch piece and a one and a half inch square. Now this way you'll do exactly the same. Line everything up with a needle and that line on my sewing machine. And so, so you do all the sides of your geese. Then you cut them apart. Um, I usually just get a pair of scissors and I just do all the clippings at once. Now, then I would just come back here and I would trim this off. Now you can see uh, one of the complaints I think about this method is that you have some waste here. So this is a clipping from this geese, which is a two by four finished flying geese. This is pretty small. Uh, I save them from two and a half inch by four and a half inch pieces, but I don't save the smaller size. So this I will go in my scrap in. These are good to do quarter square triangles. Um, you could make a half square triangle out of this. It would be really small finished, but um, in little tiny projects, like it's, it, they're good. So I keep these. They're also good for um, 
foundation paper piecing sometimes you need like little pieces and this works great so I keep them for that now I don't keep this little size this is the one and a half by two and a half flying geese so one by two finished this is just too small for me to use and if they're bigger than this I absolutely save them they can be reused very nicely now that we have um these uh, I think a lot of people at this point would go and press with a hot iron. I do find you, you can really, really easily get distortion with that. So I try not to press just with all my quill blocks, but especially flying geese. So I just finger press this down. I laid my other square on and now I'm going to sew here. And I will do the same thing for this other one that we were testing with. So I'm just going to finger press this open. And basically that just means you just lay it open, you're not stretching or warping it, and then you just push with your fingers along this line. And that helps it like get a little bit of a crease. It kind of forms like a little memory of where it's supposed to be. And once that's ready, then I lay my other square on. Let me pick up my foot. Sometimes it's helpful to pick up your foot and get that point right at your needle. Okay, and then we're just gonna sew this. And then these are made. So let's just trim this and take a look. I'm gonna trim that edge off and I'm gonna trim this. So we have another of our flying geese. This is a two and a half by four and a half again. And then here is our small one, our one and a half by two and a half. And that one's looking good. And it's the same thing. Even though this is small, you're still having a quarter of an inch from that point to, to the bottom edge. So those are that. Let me just explain to you a little bit about my machine setup. When I'm doing flying geese, I have my straight stitch plate on. So here is the regular plate. It has this really wide area here that the needle can go in. And this is like really what it, this is for is zigzag stitches or satin stitches, anything where your needle is moving back and forth. So your needle doesn't hit this plate. When I'm doing a straight stitch and when I'm piecing my quilts, I use this other one. So let me just show you. It has a circle right here that the needle goes in and the reason that this is helpful is because the material around the part that you're sewing doesn't get dragged into this and stuck in the feed dogs like it sometimes can when you have this other plate so when I am quilting I'm always using this straight stitch plate For flying geese and foundation paper piecing, I like this foot. This is 34D. It's a clear reverse pattern foot. I like this because you can see through it. It's got some markings on it to help, um, like help guide you. This center red line is in line with your needle. So when I'm stitching, I, I can keep that red line in line with something I want to be. And I know that my needle is falling right behind and that's really helpful. And then um, the machine that I have has has the dual feed, so I just drop the dual feed uh, when I'm using it. It's very helpful to get the fabric through evenly. And um, the other thing that I do is my pr the pressure of my presser foot, I reduce it down to zero. When I piece, I like reducing that down to zero on this machine. I just find it's really helpful. Now, if I'm making a garment or a bag, I keep that pressure um, at 50, which is the default. I'll adjust from there if I need to, but um, when I'm piecing a quilt, I always drop it down to zero. Now let, let me show you what else I'm working on. So right now I am making some flying geese for a project. These are really large flying geese. Um, these are five by nine and a half right now. So everything is sewn on to my left for all these and I just finished the right and now they need to be trimmed away. Now these flying geese, they're too big to hold in my hand and trim with scissors. So I like to use a rotary cutter. But what I do to save time is I trim this whole lot of them at once. So let me lift up my ruler just so you can see what I've done here. What I did was I take them and I take this seam line and I line it up with a line on my mat. So if I fold these back, you'll see that this one underneath is lined with this line. The stitch line follows that line and it meets it back here too. Then I just, kitty, kitty bomb. So then I line the next one up, I do the same thing. I make sure that my stitch line is in line with the same line as before, and I just repeat that. And then I keep stacking them. 
I stack as many as I can for as long as my ruler can reach. So you can see right now I have 12 stacked and these are pretty big flying geese. So that's all I think I could really fit here. Then I just take my ruler. I line the quarter inch line of my ruler, which on this ruler is a dotted line, up with the black line on the top. It follows the seam line. So the quarter inch line is exactly on all the seams. And then it's gonna come down here and just need to adjust it and then meet this black line down here. And once I have that in place, I will just rotary cut these all away. You just have to be really firm with your hand on the roller so that you don't slip. And also you wanna have a nice sharp blade because if you don't, you're not gonna go through all these layers. Then all of this is just gonna come off and I save all these because these are really big cuts since these geese are so big and you have your geese all trimmed. And that's how you can trim a lot at once with the rotary cutter. So you can do this for both sides, not just the, I did it on the right, but you can do it on the left in the first step too. Do it on the right and then this makes really quick work of it. You do not need to press before you do this. My blocks are not pressed. I just made sure my seam lines lined up nicely. These, are, you can see, these are not pressed. Um, and it still works perfectly. So I hope that kind of demystifies the stitch and flip flying geese. It's a really easy unit to make. It does take practice to make it accurate, but the actual steps you need to make it aren't difficult. So if you have any questions on making this unit, just let me know. Thanks for following along.